Are you a control player that's been interested in modern but afraid of the high price of decks? Then bring yourself online in modern with Mono Blue Tron. Mono Blue Tron is surprisingly cheap for such a competitive deck. While still not quite tier 1, it is extremely powerful nonetheless, and can also serve as a great intro point into the format for those that love to play Control. In fact, for the Fanatic Blue player, this deck offers precise, almost clockwork control. Running at about $150, many of these components can be had on the cheap, and a few of the more costlier pieces might already be in your binder. The heart of this deck are the Urza lands. Bring one of each into play and you have seven colorless mana from three lands. With mana money like that, you can buy your way to victory. The win conditions of this deck have a beautiful toolkit-like nature. Unlike its bigger brother, Red Green Tron, Mono Blue keeps several win conditions handy for different situations. Treasure Mages select the tool you need to win the game you are playing, and Academy Ruins will bring them back as much as you need them. It can also serve as a starting build towards the more powerful, but much, much more expensive, Red Green Tron. Let's bring this deck online and take a look. Check the description of this video for links to the deck lists. Remember, I am showing basic, solid builds, templates. The fine tuning is done by you, over time, and typically in collaboration with others. Being reprinted both in Chronicles, 5th, and also thankfully 8th and 9th edition, has kept the cost of Urza lands down to a couple bucks each. For those on an extreme budget, the white-bordered Chronicle versions, which, by the way, still have the original art on them, are as little as 50 cents each. This deck's powerhouse of a mana base can be obtained for as little as $6 for all 12 Urza lands. Feeling like a collector? Try and get one of each of the 12 different artworks from the original, meant to represent the changing seasons of the year. Mindslaver is the go-to win condition for this deck. At only about $275 each, it's a mythic savings. The trick is to generate 12 mana, something that can be accomplished with as few as 6 lands in this deck. And then, using Academy Ruins, create a lock where you can endlessly take your opponent's turn for them, locking them out of the game. $6 isn't bad for this card, especially when you only need one in your deck, and it works in coordination with your other heavy hitters too. Please note, Make sure you actually have the capability to kill your opponents when you lock them out, or that you at least have a significant amount of draw spells available to draw into some force, or you might accidentally lock yourself out of a win as well. Academy Ruins also works elegantly with Oblivion Stone to provide you precision board wipe, saving your forces and eliminating your opponents. Used in conjunction with a Sundering Titan or a Worm Coil Engine, it's a hard-to-beat board state. Worm Coil Engines are one of the more costlier components, but luckily the deck really only needs two due to Treasure Mage's helpful tutoring. This is a great answer for those aggro-heavy decks you might be going up against. Sundering Titan will hurt anyone not in mono colors, and in modern, that's the vast majority of decks. Finally, Platinum Angel is a last resort panic button to simply shut down an opponent who is about to win. But you better hope they don't have the right removal or that you are holding a handful of counter spells to keep it on the board. Expedition Map is another key component. It grabs your missing Urza lands to ensure that they come online in time and also snaps up the Academy Ruins when you need them. Talisman of Progress helps you with both acceleration and mana fixing. Many players make the critical mistake of leaving this component out of their decks. The Sad Robot is another important piece, giving you land, a blocker, and card draw. You'll need a playset of Thirst for Knowledge because you're going to spend most turns digging for what you need. Lands, win cons, and counter spells. Tempo is also a key early game strategy with this deck. Countering spells, getting extra draw, acceleration, and removal are all part of a highly calculated and coordinated piloting effort. You're not going to win early with Mono Blue Tron, so the idea is to slow your opponents down as you speed yourself up. Again, Repeal, Spellburst, Condescend, and Thirst for Knowledge are all cards that can be had on the cheap. 
The only pricey control here is Remand, but its recent reprinting in the Jace vs. Veraska dual deck has helped drop the price considerably. $10 still isn't cheap, especially when you need a playset. This is not a deck for those who don't love playing control. Emphasis on the word love. You need to be a control fanatic to appreciate and enjoy the meticulous construction of this deck. As such, this deck is not for everyone. Even with its relatively low cost, I always recommend players interested in Tron proxy up a deck first and practice a lot to see how they like it. Depending on your play style, your interests, your strengths, and your weaknesses, you'll find it to be either a thing of clockwork beauty or a rusting machine whose gears keep grinding. I hope this video has been helpful to you. You can help me out by remembering to subscribe, like, sharing this video, or just by leaving a comment. And remember, you can't play Magic at Target or Walmart. Are you buying a dual deck to get that modern staple? If their prices are fair, then try and spend that money at your local game store instead. You're supporting your Magic community.